2021 is halfway over. What should you do if you're thinking of buying a home? What are the latest projections from the experts about buying a home right now? My name is Caitlin Peterson, and I'm a realtor with Exit Realty serving the Ogden area. If you're new here and haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notifications of when I post a new video. So other than that, let's dive into today's buyer's biggest concerns and address them right away. Last week, Fannie Mae released their Home Purchase Sentiment Index, HPSI. Though the survey showed 77% of respondents believe it's a good time to sell, it also confirms what many are sensing, an increase in number of Americans who believe it's a bad idea to buy a home right now. The percentage of those surveys saying it's a bad time to buy hit 64%. That's up from 56% last month and 38% last July. The latest HPSI explains that customers also continue to cite high home prices as the predominant reason for their ongoing and significant divergence in sentiment toward home buying and home selling conditions. While all surveyed segments have expressed greater negativity towards home buying over the last few months, renters who say they are planning to buy a home in the next few years have demonstrated an even steeper decline in home buying. It's likely that affordability concerns are more greatly affecting those who aspire to be first-time home buyers than other consumer segment. Let's look closely at the market conditions that impact home affordability. A mortgage payment is determined by the price of the home and the mortgage rate on the loan used to purchase. Lately, monthly mortgage payments have gone up for buyers for two main reasons. One, mortgage rates have increased from 2.65 this past January to 2.9. Home prices have increased by 15.4% over the last 12 months. 15.4%. Based on those rising factors, a home may be less affordable today. It doesn't mean it's not affordable. Three weeks ago, ATTOM data released their second quarter 2021 U.S. Home Affordability Report, which explained that the major ownership costs on a typical home as a percent of the average national wage had increased from 22.2% in the second quarter of 2020 to 252 in the second quarter of this year. They also went on to explain, still, the latest level is within the 28% standard lenders prefer for how much homeowners should spend on mortgage payments home insurance, and property taxes. In the same report, Todd Tita, Chief Product Officer with ATTOM, confirms average workers across the country can still manage the major expenses of owning a home based on lender standards. It's true that monthly mortgage payments are greater than they were last year, as the ATTOM data shows, but they're not unaffordable when compared to the last 30 years. While payments have increased dramatically during that several decade span, if we just adjust for inflation, today's mortgage payments are 10.7% lower than they were in 1990. So what does that mean for you? While you may not get the home buying deal someone you know got last year, that doesn't mean you shouldn't still buy a home. Here are your alternatives to buy and the trade-offs you'll have with each. Alternative one, I hear this all the time, I'll just rent instead. Some may consider renting as the better option. However, the monthly cost of renting a home is skyrocketing. According to the July National Rent Report from Apartment List, so far in 2021, rental prices have grown to staggering 9.2%. To put that in context, in previous years, growth from January to June is usually just 2 to 3%. After this month's spikes, Rents have pushed well above our expectations of where they sh would have been had the pandemic not disrupted the market. If you continue to rent, chances are your rent will keep increasing at that fast pace. That means you could end up spending significantly more on your income on your rental as time goes on, which could make it even harder to save for a home. The alternative two, I'll just wait it out. Others may consider waiting another year and hoping that purchasing a home will be less expensive then. So let's look at that possibility. We've already established that monthly mortgage payment is determined by the price of the home and the mortgage rate. A lower monthly payment will require one of those two elements to decrease over the next year. However, experts are forecasting the exact opposite. The Mortgage Bankers Association projects mortgage rates will be at 4.2% by the end of next year. Let's say it louder for those people in the back that didn't hear that. The Mortgage of Bankers Association projects that mortgage rates will be 4.2% by the end of next year. The Home Price Expectation Survey, a survey of over 100 economists, investment strategists, and housing market analysts, calls for home prices to increase by 5.12% in 2022. 
Based on these projections, let's see the possible impact on a monthly mortgage payment. As you can see from the graph, the cost of the home will increase as well as the mortgage rate, which will increase your monthly payments in the end, as well as the mortgage amount you're having to borrow significantly. The bottom line is, while you may have missed the absolute best time to buy a home, waiting any longer may not make sense. Mark Fleming, chief economist at First American, says it best. Affordability is likely to worsen before it improves, so try to buy it now if you can find it. So what do you think? Do you think now is the best time to buy a house, or do you want to wait? Leave a comment below and let me know what you think about this. And if you are interested in buying a home and you want to check out the Ogden area, go check out some of my other videos I've got. Alright? I'll see you guys next time. Bye!